Okay, Miller, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Okay, great. And I see seated in front of me uh, Miss Quiggins and her husband? Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you so much for appearing uh, with us today, Miss Quiggins. This is Mr. Kamau at policeabuse.com. As you know, we are investigating two complaints um, you reported to our office, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to give us a statement and in your own words describe what your concerns are regarding the activities of the local police officials, the local government, and some officials in your homeowners association. Uh, let me just give you the floor and ask you to start by telling me uh, your full name um, and then start telling us a few details about why you contacted policeabuse.com. My name is Kathleen Quiggins and I contacted, uh, I contacted uh, police.com. I found you on the internet because I was desperate, couldn't get anybody to help me. I had reported my problems to the police department and they refused to listen to me. Uh, what had happened is that we have a gentleman that lives here uh, in the condo that has pretty much attacked my husband several times and does not like my husband and made that very clear. And so uh, about two, about a, right last summer sometime in 2011, we all received, everybody that was on the board and a few other people received a letter um, from a, something about a prophet. In, re, in answer to that, I wrote a letter of, uh, quoting some Bible verses and telling these people that my husband was no longer on the board to please leave us alone. And uh, uh, I Said I mailed it to some people, and he, Mr. Hill, Keith Hillman was one of the people I mailed it to. Uh, when he received it, he wrote on it a nasty note and pushed it back into our door and told us never to leave our, uh, our trash at his, in his, uh, at his home again. So I wrote him a letter. I, I got on the email, and I sent him an apology and said, I did not mean to upset you. Uh, and he came back quickly and on the email and told me that I was crazy. I was certifiably crazy. I need to be put away and not to ever bother him again. Uh, we went back one or two um, emails, and I told him I didn't appreciate him saying that. And he came back and said, "If you if you um, email me again, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to turn you into the police." I emailed him one more time and said, "Please, let's just leave each other alone and let this go." And the next the next Tuesday after Labor Day. In 2011, he went to the police department or called the police department in Jeffersonville, Indiana, and reported this non threatening email. And within 45 minutes, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Officer McVeigh was at our door, beating on our door. I answered it, and he, my husband actually answered it. He didn't know who it was. And he said, he said, um, he was here because of a complaint about me from Keith Hillman. And he said, gave me a severe warning not to ever email Mr. Hillman again, and he walked away. The problem is, about in 2009, there's a lady that lives here in our condos that had harassed us and stalked us. She had tried to blackmail my husband to get off the board. She had been in this, she got in the swimming pool with us and some other guests while we were in there, and she underwater kicked my husband in his rear. She, we, we, she'd just been harassing us, yelling names at, a, at my husband, calling him a thief and all this stuff. So my husband went over to the police department in 2009, in about June or July, and made a report against her. And they pretty much told him to just, uh, it would, that they would send it over to the, uh, he would have to take it over to the uh, prosecutor's office. Um, they weren't really interested. And he went over and did what they told him to do. And the prosecutor's office said, well, just stick it in the file under Harbors and that was all, that's all they were going to do. So my problem is why did they do nothing about this woman who was doing much less, to, much worse to us, but yet Mr. Hillman makes one complaint and they're on here, over here beating on my door in 45 minutes, making a, uh, giving me a warning. So that, that was unacceptable. And I tried to find out the reason why by calling the police department and they Told, I called the Mr. Uh, Officer McVeigh's supervisor. He pretty much told me, tough luck, it's none of your business. I don't have to talk to you. Just get over it. And at that time, I found you all, and that's why I contacted you. Did he tell you he was a nosy neighbor or something? He said, well, he, that, that was, uh, he told me I was just being a nosy neighbor, but he said it was none of my business, and he didn't have to answer my questions. So that's when I found you and called you all and got this thing started. Okay, so I you felt you, you felt you felt that one primary reason for your 
um, concern about how you were treated is that they were behaving unprofessionally, that they weren't, uh, that they were blowing you off and dismissing you? My biggest problem is not so much that they treated me unprofessionally as that they showed a tremendous amount of favoritism by jumping on him, Mr. Hillman reporting me for a very, very locally non-threatening email, mm -hmm. and immediately they jumped on on it for him and came over here and gave me a warning and scared me to, you know, to never go, never do it again. But yet in 2009, with this woman terrorizing us, we went, we went over and we were, they totally ignored us. So it's pretty much favoritism and bias is what is my problem here. Got you. Got you. So it's small town favoritism. Uh, by the police, in your opinion, in Absolutely. terms of they're, they're not, performing their, the, not performing their duties the fairly. Time it, it's not the first time it happens all the time, and, and uh, we're obviously, we feel that we're targets um, because of the other case that we're going to talk about later. We feel that we're somewhat targets, and our name is, is kind of a blackballed over at the police department, uh, the Quiggins, because of um, Ken's case. So... Um, there's just a lot of favoritism, and that is pretty strange that they would want to, they would want to jump on an unthreatening email, but yet, yet a woman that is stalking somebody and threatening to blackmail them and threatening to, and screaming names at them, which she does to everybody. And for many people here, she doesn't like, and nothing's ever been done to her. Well, let me, let me, let me stop, let me stop you there one. and ask you about that. How, how serious were the threats? Did you report them to the police, and what did the police tell you? That, that, that demonstrates to you that their treatment of that investigation was substandard and that the complaints made against you was given full attention um, by the police. What's, what happened in that first case? What did you report and what did they say to you? Um, you you're talking about the, the, this case, the case with um, the Haley. Betty, oh, Betty, Betty Haley, um, this woman that, uh, that did this to us, uh, when after, the, after my husband did the criminal conversion thing, which we're going to go into later, she met him in the, uh, she talked to him, asked him to meet her, and she told him that if he did not resign from the board of directors immediately, within three days, she was going to turn us in to secure, uh, the Social Security office for having an illegal scooter, which is ridiculous. And then uh, she was also told him she, he would pay he would pay if he did, for other ways if he didn't resign. And of course he told her I'm not going to let you blackmail me. I'm not resigning. And she did turn us over to the Social Security office, and they pretty much threw her out. Mm. But she also spread a thing around all over over 200 copies all over a place where we live about something that happened to my husband 30 years ago that was really nobody's business. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty much smeared our name all over the harbors. Then right. she threatened she. She's yelled three feet at him and, and, and called him a crook every time she sees him. She, she stalked us in the swimming pool and stared at us while we were trying to do our water aerobics. She, it was pretty, it's pretty terrifying to have somebody to constantly do that to you. And then when you go to the police and ask for help, this woman is known to do this. She's attacked people here. The stat, one lady, one of our manager quit beca uh, here because of this. she's so terrified of this woman. She literally physically abused, uh, physically attacked one of the managers here, and they called the police, and that's, that case went nowhere. Uh, it seems to me like she's immune to anything to do with the, the police because she's got political connections, obviously, at the police department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the prosecutor's office. Okay. So I, I understand the story uh, at this point. She wanted, she was harassing you and holding something that she dug up from on the Internet or wherever, and then she was actually publicizing this information into the community? Actually, I was being prosecuted for criminal conversion. The prosecutor dug in and found out that I was a convicted felon, happened to tell the lady that, not this lady, but another lady that was pushing the case of my criminal conversion. Mm -hmm. He told her I was a convicted felon. The next thing you know, this Betty Haley was passing out papers all over the place showing showing my conviction so on and so forth literally the thing our name so on and so forth his, so, his his history is that he it was a it was a credit card thing with his children and he protected his children it was 30 years ago and it's really nobody's business it's not like it was a let me say let me say something to you about that and I, i'm so glad that you that you were thoughtful enough to just be up front and say what it was because i'm going to tell you right. something Something that happened. Well, we have nothing. Let me let me finish. I, I'm on I'm on the same page. 
something that happened 30 years ago is nobody's business. And uh, your husband is an upstanding citizen. We've looked into him, and we know that that was a long time ago and has nothing to do with anything that's happening right now. And it's not a violent crime. It's not a predatory crime. It's not a stalking event. It's not a physical abuse of anyone. And I think that most regular people would see it just as the way you just described it, a nothing. So, you know, what's gone down like in the last 10 years is because of the Internet, any fool can get out there with a charge against someone or some information they dig up, and it's, it, they can paint it in the way that they like. We try to be as fair as we can uh, for one reason. We've had it done to us. If you Google my name or policeabuse.com, sometimes you'll find uh, things that people have written that are completely baseless, but how can you stop them? You know, you can't police the Internet. So I empathize with what you're dealing with, and we're going to try to make sure that if this woman um, is continuing to behave in the way that you've described, that the police address it, and that if the police contact you in the future, that they have a good reason to do so and they have good standing. And I want to make sure that they're aware that we're monitoring the situation. So uh, with that, let me turn the floor over to your husband and have him talk about a second matter that he wanted to report to us. Okay. Okay. What was the second matter? We're talking about the criminal conversion. Oh, criminal conversion. Well, what happened with the criminal conversion, of course, is that uh, I was president of the association here. I had sent out a letter October the 9th telling everybody... 2009. The 2008, 2008, yeah. October 9, 2008, telling everybody that it was against the rules of the harbors <clears throat> for residents to be passing out things and sticking things underneath people's doors. After all, this the front door says there is no solicitation in this building, <clears throat> and that was a form of solicitation. What they were doing was they were soliciting votes for everybody, you know, their candidates, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And Something's never been done before in, in this building. And uh, we come home on the night of the election, the day of the election from the doctor's office, and my wife told me on the way that the lady next door had some papers sticking out from her, under her door. She said no. And uh, so I looked, and of uh, all things, it was papers about the, the fellow that was running for vice president who was also on the board and been president of the association, so on and so forth. So there was nine of them, and I just took them. I literally took them out from underneath the door. Well, the next thing you know, that night of the election, she accused me of stealing ballots from under her door rather than papers. And uh, she called the uh, Channel 5, 41 News. Shock 41 News, and Friday they had me on there and accusing me of stealing ballots uh, from the election and so on and so forth. Of course, the night of the election, she turned that in and... and Asked the attorney that was in charge of the election, he assured her that all the ballots she, she asked about were in the box and had been turned in, so on and so forth. So there was nothing, there was nothing about ballots. These were just nasty things about parking spaces, propaganda, and just propaganda in general. At any rate, she did accuse, finally accuse me of the right thing. She went over and, and filed a police report, accused me of the right thing of stealing these nine pieces of useless paper out from under the door. And it took us two and a half years to finally get the end of this thing, and I had to agree not to sue her for defamation, which I didn't really want to do. But I had her, I had her charged with defamation, and uh, finally the prosecutor released the case. But before they would release the case, they made me drop my civil suit, which I didn't feel was fair because they should not be in the middle of a civil suit of that nature so that's really that's, that, that's really really strange let me ask you about that why do they care after the criminal issue is resolved or whether why would they use the leverage of a criminal complaint to make you drop a civil suit which is outside of their purview that's what i want to know until about robin issue that was wonderful that they did that but uh, for for her not me tell her about robin i will wait wait a minute we're talking about this kathy let me finish this at any rate, uh, you know, it, it had nothing, you know, they, they had no business interfering with my civil suit in order to drop the case. Now, I understand I asked for a jury trial, mm -hmm. and the last thing they wanted to do was 
take me to court for a jury trial for nine pieces of useless paper. They look like fools. So that that was the only way I guess they could figure out how to get out of. Let me let me uh, let me let me just stop you there for a second, Mr. Quick, and I had a que ask you a question. They were prosecuting you for this small amount of paper. You you mentioned that this was on the news, correct? Oh yeah, been on the news twice. They, they not only prosecuted, they arrested me for this. They come, they come, they come, come into my home, handcuffed me, and put me in jail for this for the afternoon. And they literally kept me over there like four hours, uh, which was the most stupid thing in the world. On on who on whose yeah. word? Who, who's the person that gave them the information that you were? Uh, taking these documents that were being stuck under doors. Well, on her word, she had a camera in her door that we didn't know about. That we didn't know about, and of course, it, it, it showed up on television that I took the papers out from underneath their door. Okay, uh, so they released the video to the media. Right, they released the video to the media showing me bending down, retrieving these, and of course, uh, I asked, I asked the. Association's attorney. I had the association's attorney in the middle of this at the, the start of this, and he told me that the prosecutor's office asked if I would come over and just tell them the truth. Don't worry about it. I would not get arrested. You know, they just wanted to clear the the, the, the thing off and get it out of the way. So just tell them exactly what happened. So I went over and was very truthful with them and told them exactly the entire thing. Admitted to taking the papers. And the next thing you know, uh, I'm getting arrested for it. I mean, they told him I would not get arrested, nothing would happen to me, so on and so forth. Next mm -hmm. thing I know, I'm getting arrested for it, and I'm being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. But understand, she works at the Census Bureau. She'd been, she'd been at the Census Bureau for like 25 years, knew a lot of senators, congressmen, mayor. and mayor, the mayor here in Jeffersonville. She knew everybody because all their offices over at the Census Bureau. So it was, it was all political. The whole thing was nothing but a a political nightmare. So what makes it worse is what happened after that with this other with this other. Yeah, we have situation. we have one that we have a gal that came and got stole papers out from uh, a security guard's uh, report. She she took it. We filed a complaint against her for criminal conversion, and it went nowhere. Mm. Yet that was a much more serious charge than what mine was yeah, because, I mean, and we have it on tape that but she she actually took. This this uh, incident, report. incident report from the security guard. Got it. Got it. And okay. She was, and they, let me let me just uh, let me just uh, go back over this. Did you give Mr. Miller a copy of the videotape? We are trying to find it right now. I had six copies made, and apparently the fool didn't make them right. So I, I, I'm I'm trying to find the original so we can give Mr. Miller a copy of the tape. Yes. Okay, that's a critical. Yeah. That's a critical. This is from the TV station, correct? Yeah, yes. we, we will get it. Okay. Before he leaves, he will have a copy of this tape. And he also has a copy of the tape of the woman stealing the papers from the security guard's desk. That a report, a, a police report was made, and the gentleman that made it is here. Is going to said he'd be well, more than happy to come up here. And but I've got the copy of his his uh, complaint that he made against her, and it was totally ignored. Okay. And All I right. do have a copy also of the, the complaint I filed against Betty Haley that nothing was done about. Okay. Here's what I want to do. We're right at the 26-minute mark on the recording, um, and what I want to do at this point is um, end the, the conversation now but have Mr. Miller follow up with any questions that he has for you. He'll be recording those. And those will be added subsequently to your blog after I, re I receive it from Mr. Miller over the Internet. Uh, the other thing I, I'd like to do um, is if there's any other witnesses or anyone else he can talk to while he's there today, I want to get him to have a sit down for, for a few minutes with uh, any witnesses. And then more important than, than even the witnesses at this point, this point, I would like for Mr. Miller to uh, take video footage of the places where some of these events took place, um, you know, the street, the area, uh, where maybe where even where you were, where they had the, the woman who shot the video. I, obviously, I don't want you to do anything that's going to violate a court order by going near her, but Mr. Miller um, can simply drive through and go to some of the places, including uh, the police department. I want to have that video footage uh, for B-roll um, for the story on your blog, so I'd like for him to do anything that uh, I've listed in the last couple of minutes, um, and anything that you think is important for him to shoot, have him do it while he's there. Okay? Yeah, 
the nice thing is the lady is the lady has since moved out. She was our next door neighbor, so it's pretty easy. All we got to do is walk out in the hallway, so that's okay. Okay. And we that, have actually, we have a video of, of what was going on in that hallway and part of it, uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, we'll we'll make sure he gets all of that information. Okay, very good. All right, I'm going to be following up with you because I do have some other things I want Mr. Miller um, to do on your case that we haven't uh, agreed to do, but I want to go over them with you. And if we if we don't do anything more, we will simply finish your blog because I think we have everything I need now to publish. All right, so I want to thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Quiggins. With that, I'm going to end uh, this live broadcast. And Mr. Miller, I'll be calling you uh, in about two hours to get a follow-up on, on the uh, evidence you're collecting there now. Okay? That'll be fine. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you so much. You all have a great day. You too. Uh-huh.